welcome back. I hope you are uh, relaxed uh, during the break time. And now you are ready to start uh, our second lesson. And uh, like we mentioned earlier, our second lesson is on micro teaching. This is a follow up of our peer teaching that we had in the, the first lesson. It's a very, very interesting uh, topic. Uh, for this uh, micro teaching, what do I expect you to have uh, achieved by the end of the lesson? So let's look at the objectives or our expected uh, learning outcomes. And the first one is you should be able to define the term micro teaching. Secondly, you should be able to explain uh, what uh, micro teaching entails. Thirdly, describe the phases of micro teaching. And uh, number four, elaborate on the significance of feedback in uh, micro teaching. Those are the four expected learning outcomes for our topic. <coughs> now let's uh, go straight away into this uh, concept of uh, micro teaching. Now what does uh, micro teaching uh, mean? Now we have uh, various scholars who are experts in this uh, field of uh, teacher preparation under which uh, micro teaching falls. And we would like to look at uh, just three of those uh, experts and how uh, they defined micro teaching. We start with uh, Allen in uh, 1966, and he defined micro teaching as a, a scaled down uh, teaching encounter in class size and time. That was Allen, 1966. Then we have uh, Eve and Allen uh, in 1968, a different Allen this time. And he said that micro teaching is a system of controlled practice that makes it possible to concentrate on a specific uh, teaching behavior and to practice teaching under controlled conditions. Then we move on to Bush in uh, 1968, uh, later in that uh, year, 1968, and uh, he had a lengthy definition of uh, micro teaching, perhaps in an effort to become more inclusive, uh, where he said, micro teaching is a teacher training technique which allows uh, student teachers to apply clearly defined teaching skills in carefully prepared lessons, in a planned series of five to 10 minute encounters with a small group of our real students, often with an opportunity to observe the results on a videotape. Quite a lengthy definition, but uh, very, very inclusive indeed. So when we consider these uh, <clears throat> three definitions, they have a common uh, denominator, which we can uh, distill and then uh, summarize and say in summary, uh, micro teaching is a training technique for a student teacher like you, where complexities of uh, the normal classroom uh, teaching are reduced by, number one, practicing one skill of competence at a time, limiting the content taught to a single concept. Then uh, the class size. The normal class size is about 40, 50, or even more students. But uh, during micro teaching, the class size is uh, reduced to about 10 to 15 uh, students or pupils. And finally, the duration of the lesson is uh, reduced to about 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes again, instead of the normal 40 or 80 minutes. So that is the summary of uh, this uh, micro teaching and the things I would expect you to note uh, is that the skill of competence that is being practiced by the student teacher is one, just one skill. We are going to uh, look at these skills uh, later in the lesson. The content that this uh, uh, student teacher is teaching during micro teaching is confined to one single concept. One, one single concept. Maybe they are concentrating on measurement or volume or something like that, but just one single concept. Then the, the size of the class of uh, the students or pupils that is being taught 
is not the whole class of uh, 50 or 60. You divide the class into small groups of between 10 to 15 students for this micro teaching exercise. Then the duration of the, the lesson, like we said, is uh, normally the timetables in a secondary school classes are 40 minutes. If it's a single lesson or 80 minutes, if it's a double. But for micro teaching purposes, the duration of the lesson is uh, reduced to a maximum of 15 minutes. Now, when you look at those uh, characteristics, that's why it is called micro. Um, the next uh, consideration I would like us to uh, take a look at is um, what are the characteristics of uh, micro teaching? The first characteristics to note and the nature of this uh, exercise, micro teaching, that it is a training technique. Training technique, not a teaching technique. It is a technique for preparing student teachers to eventually qualified as teachers. That's why we are calling it training technique. It's not a teaching technique. The teaching techniques will come later. Then the next one, the second one, it is a design used for training uh, student uh, teachers. There are many designs, but for student teachers, this is one of the crucial ones, where the students practice with a small group, use teaching for 15 minutes, single concept, and therefore they are able to practice more and more. Then we can also call it a miniaturized uh, teaching because it scales down the complexities of the real normal teaching by the following. Limiting the content to be taught to one single concept, Again, reducing the class size to about uh, 5 to 10 pupils, reducing the total duration of the lesson to about 10 minutes, and finally, practicing only one teaching skill at a time. And we said we are looking at these uh, skills later in the lesson. Uh, the next uh, uh, feature of uh, micro teaching there is provision of uh, immediate feedback to the trainee teacher. About his, or performance, uh, about his or her performance as soon as the micro lesson is over. In other words, <clears throat> when the student teacher has taught uh, for about 10 or 15 minutes, there is a session that is provided for feedback, comments from uh, the students who are being taught. They raise questions, they make suggestions on uh, areas of improvement, and so on. Then uh, who provides the feedback? those students who are taught, as well as the, the class teacher who was in the background. Then we can also add that uh, micro-teaching provides the, the trainee teacher with a, an opportunity to prepare the lesson afresh and then pre, uh, present it again the second time. And when they do that, they incorporate the feedback they obtained um, from fellow students and from the class teacher. Now, micro-teaching has several phases. We are from our small subheading here, phases of our micro-teaching. There are several phases. Let's look at uh, these phases. The first one is um, referred to as the knowledge acquisition phase. It's also the preactive uh, stage um, for in micro-teaching. What happens in this uh, stage is that the student teachers observe their teacher demonstrating how the micro teaching session will be carried out. So the teacher must demonstrate as the student uh, teachers observe. Then after the teacher has demonstrated, they now discuss, then they analyze the demonstration, what the teacher did, what they are expected to do, and so on. This uh, leads to the second uh, uh, phase, the skill acquisition phase. We also call it the interactive phase. Uh, in this case now, from the skills they learned when they were observing the demonstration, it is now their turn uh, to practice uh, those skills. So what do they do? They prepare a micro lesson. And I remember we mentioned this micro lesson, why it qualifies to be micro. It is scaled down. Then after they have uh, prepared uh, that uh, micro lesson, they practice 
the skill. One of the skills uh, under micro teaching during the micro teaching session. In this case, this uh, skill acquisition phase, it is the student teachers who are actually now taking over and are practicing what they learned or what they observed when the teacher was demonstrating. Then we come to uh, the third uh, phase, evaluation of our performance phase, and this is where they obtain uh, feedback. The feedback, uh, remember we said, is provided by the pairs, is provided by the class teacher who is overseeing the session or the practice. So once the uh, feedback is uh, provided, what happens to the feedback? The student who practiced uh, that micro lesson is supposed to incorporate those comments in his second attempt. So this second attempt, he will prepare the lesson and then reteach the lesson. So as he teaches the, the lesson, those who are being taught, the fellow students, they observe whether the teacher now is improving on the areas of weakness that they pointed out uh, as he goes on uh, with the second uh, uh, lesson of uh, reteaching. <coughs> and then the, f uh, the fifth uh, phase, transfer phase. The student teacher is now expected to transfer the skills learned to the actual real classroom situation when they are now almost perfect. That's the time we go to the transfer phase. Then they can teach a whole class for 40 minutes covering more than one concept to make it uh, real. Then after this uh, phases, we would also would like to look at the micro teaching cycle. In this uh, cycle, uh, I would like you to imagine it's like a circle and it is cyclic, starting from number one all the way to number, uh, step number six, one leading into the other. So what is this uh, first uh, uh, step? in the cycle, planning. The teacher must plan. As you plan, you plan uh, what are your objectives for that uh, simplified lesson. What is step number one in the lesson during presentation, step number two, three, four, and so on. What is your conclusion? What is your summary? What questions uh, will I ask? So you plan in advance before you present the lesson. Uh, step number two, you now actualize what you, what you had planned. You actualize it by teaching the micro lesson. Number three, you receive a feedback from the trainer and from the students that you have been teaching. Remember, they are your peers. Number four, after feedback, you go back to the drawing board. You, re you do a replanning of the micro lesson. You plan it again. That's why we are calling it replanning. After you have taken care of the, the feedback, areas of improvement incorporated, then you go to step number five, you reteach that lesson again. And then number six, uh, naturally it follows that you also receive uh, feedback on your second attempt uh, on the uh, lesson that you have just completed. So there is a bit of a discussion uh, in number six, whether you have actually gotten the skills or how far you are in that uh, uh, scale whether you are on the upper side of the scale, whether you are in the middle, or whether you are on the lower scale, we would expect, uh, because this is the second or third attempt, that you have uh, risen much higher on the scale. Then, um, the importance of this uh, micro-teaching cycle. You keep learning from every repetition. And finally, before you can uh, master, you repeat and uh, repeat and uh, as uh, many times as uh, required, until you master the requisite skills that will qualify you to go and teach a normal or a whole class. So what have we said uh, in this uh, lesson? One, we started by defining what is a micro-teaching, the nature and uh, characteristics of uh, micro-teaching. Remember those uh, four features of uh, micro-teaching? Then the phases of a micro-teaching uh, procedure, and uh, finally the micro-teaching uh, cycle that has six steps. 
So that uh, will bring us to the end of our lesson number two. Uh, and as we do that, there is an assignment for you. <coughs> and uh, this assignment um, would expect you to define uh, the term micro-teaching. Then uh, explain what this uh, micro-teaching technique entails. Describe the micro-teaching uh, circle as number three. And then uh, for number D, or number four, uh, we have a statement here. Feedback to the trainee teacher is an important phase of micro-teaching. Can you defend this view or this statement? Why is feedback to the trainee teacher from the students and the trainer considered important? So this uh, brings us to the end of our uh, lesson number two. Uh, take down the assignment attempt to do the questions uh, before we meet in the next uh, lesson, uh, lesson number three, which will be on micro-teaching skills. The ones that we have been mentioning, the skill of this, the skill of the other, we are going to consider the details of those teaching skills in our lesson number three. Thank you. These televised lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our MKU online platform. You can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform. We are in a digital era and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke. Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.